What well, everyone so, needs is a Gabe Newell Pez dispenser. Throw that in and I'm sold. <laughs> Does it come out of the nipples? Those would be collectors. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Old Man Vin, joined every week by the man in the blue shirt, always in a blue shirt from Scale that took place in 2017. One George. Sure, right. let's go. Yes. Let's go with that. Yeah, sure. Bath. <laughs> <laughs> and the man without a dick. The steam dick. How did you know? Uh, ah. a, a, a steam Richard. <laughs> Pedro Mateus. Together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, join us live watching us on Twitch. Help us form the most important. Wait, how does the uh, whatever? Whatever. Go, 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 go. <laughs> It's it's that time of year. We we listen. The re- the rest of the industry isn't trying. We don't have to try. No one gives a the shit. The joke was in my brain. It just came out as the most important reindeer of. Guess who's getting a red nose next week? <laughs> 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 Stay tuned for that. Voltron. What have we been up to, man? I have been at war. I have been trying to give the business to a thing. The score at the end of the week: France one, Vin zero, Vidigigram. <laughs> I got a Digigram, <laughs> and uh, if you if you keep track of anything, it came with a card. What I ordered was the two cables, because if you get the breakout cables for these things, they're about $100 a piece, and this was a new old stock from somewhere between 2003, 2007. Legitimately new old stock, because when I plugged it in, it had that new card Bernie smell, which when you come back in the room, you're like... <laughs> well oh. melted. Phew. All right, it's you. <laughs> I tried, everyone. I tried. I I went back and forth with it because I always look at something like this. Like, you know, you can get, because I have an AM4 motherboard with two PCO slots, but you can also get the adapters. And these things are starting to show up on eBay. And like wicked cheap, too. We're talking 50, 60 bucks. Like I got this entire kit for under 70. And I one good thing about Linux is being able to repurpose old hardware. These things are no slouches. I mean, it's 24-bit, 96K AES EBU. I don't know. Like these are broadcast cards. They're still perfectly serviceable. I'd love to be able to keep stuff out of a landfill and saying, Hey, we can do this with Linux. This is not going to happen. That's not going to happen. I tried everything possible and, uh, I took an L on this one, unfortunately, but I got my cables. So I'm happy about that, but I'm sad to report that, uh, the Digigram 222 V2 PCI version is not going to be in your future. I did describe, I, I'm did you done? It's, Digi damned man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Curse you, France. Curse you. And uh, <laughs> what about you, Jordan? I don't. I don't have any particular grievances against the French this week. Ah, just, you know, mm. just, just you know, in in general. Um, <laughs> what, no, about uh, people, what about Quebec? <laughs> bold words, Canadian man. Bold words. <laughs> yeah. let, 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 listen, man. I, my 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 ire is directed solely at Quebec. And one day they will feel my wrath. Oh yes, oh yes, Quebec, the the, the province. No, I I I got I got nothing much going on this week. Uh, just more new job stuff. Uh, played a little bit of cyberpunk. Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of it. Very boring week. Mm. Yeah, and over here I have gigabit internet now. Although it is, uh, what's that? It, upload, it's though? a bit of a lie. <laughs> It's about 900 megabits down and 50 up because the UK. So, yeah. Uh, thank you, Virgin, by the way. Uh, that was uh, just random calls like, oh, yes, I'm from Virgin. Please don't hang up. Okay. Yeah, we have package with gigabit, an extra 10 pounds a month. Okay, fine. Whatever. Do it. So, so have, you, have, have you been... Have you been downloading stuff? Have you been just hitting speed tests yes. over and over again? Pretty much. <laughs> like a moron. Just finding the biggest games like XCOM 2 just and to watch a few yeah. others. Yep. Yeah. Just, okay, let's see how fast this goes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Just, just, just go to speedtest.net and go. <laughs> <laughs> again, again. <laughs> yeah. Then, then like your, your first world power takes a hit when you head over to like the Google Fiber one where they've changed it to two gigabits. Mm. Like, mm-hmm. man. <laughs> 
Well, no, no, th- th- then you hit fucking uh, websites that are like, yeah, we're hosted on like a five megabit connection. So All good. Right. Luck with that. <laughs> yeah. No matter how fast your connection is, it's going to be a while. That's what you're going to get, man. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, the horse is still powered by VDSL two technology. I mean, yeah, it's what I mean. It's not really wet string. It's more just stretched out intestine. We 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 can get up to five hundred kilobytes. <laughs> wet noodles. It's it's the it's already wet. Let it update. Of the week. What do we get? So this let me. All right. Let, let, uh, let me let me let me tell you about this exciting new game uh, that that has come out of a Chinese studio. Uh, it involves a large sandbox. Okay. Uh, with a lot of with a lot of various creatures, Ooh, a lot of like. a lot of resources that you can gather and use to build your base. It has a um, it has a, a a co-op element to it where you can you know build teams and like build up base shared bases and go to war with each other. Right. And you might think that sounds a little familiar, right? I've, no, no, it, it sounds it like sense, completely it? holy. I no, no, no. Here, let me give you some money. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, <laughs> not, 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 not yet, not yet. Oh. Um, but you, yeah, you, you, you might think, ah, oh, that sounds, that sounds a little bit like, uh, like uh, what's, what's that game called? Minecraft, Ark Survival Evolved. There's a bunch of them. Uh, uh, we're being 100 percent mm-hmm. legit with the audience, like yeah, half the popular stuff. On <laughs> you could right be describing yeah. that. Well, right? Yeah. So, so, but so it's it's a fairly popular genre. There are a lot of games that are doing it, right? Right. right so right. it 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 turns out, uh, one uh, studio, Angela Game. Uh, Angela game, however you want to pronounce it, um, acquired a uh, new hire uh, who previously worked for the Ark Survival Evolved team. Um, and the Ark people said, "Hey, uh, this looks a little familiar. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna file a DMCA request." Uh, and lo, lo and behold, um, they they did. They eventually got to the point where they could do some source code comparison. And um, there's a lot of suspiciously similar contents and systems to Ark. Uh, and you know it's. Uh, down to the function names and variable names. Listen, man, as, as I was saying in the pre-pre-super shows, and we've all done a CS course once or twice, and we've all crept off of someone else's work, but we all know, change the variable names, change the function parameter orders a little bit, just so right. that it doesn't look like a straight copy-pasta. Um, Angel Game allegedly did not do that, and as such, they have been delisted. We were talking about that in the pre-pre-super shows, yeah. and if you're patron, go back and listen to that, but um, that yeah, I, I think maybe the A- Congratulations. Like, how did you manage to get anything working based off of the art code base? I mean, you should be rewarded for that. That person should be able to get a jump. But I, I could see the art team not even worried about that so much, but to what you were saying, like, you didn't even bother to try to cover this up. I mean, nope. seriously, out of principle, mm-hmm. maybe we're going to hammy. But the Myth of Empires team. Hi, everyone. Regarding the recent delisting of <laughs> Oopsie Doodle a few days ago, uh, alleged allegations, man. Yeah, allegedly, mm-hmm. my ass. Uh, allegedly. Haha. Deal with that, lawyer. They don't uh, deny it. Like the whole thing, it doesn't deny it. It just says, we uh, confirm that we own all the rights pertaining to Myth of Empires. Do you? I don't but know. do you really? I don't know because you <laughs> to know, Myth of Empires, yes, to the, its underlying source code. <laughs> I mean, their reply. I mean, it's kind of the standard. We're we're totes innocent, you guys. Uh, that's an interesting defense because you know, I, I also went like, well, can you still get this in like the Epic Store? I thought that'd be funnier. Maybe Gog. No, their only outlet was on Steam. So you know what? Here's the thing. Here's the thing I was having about it. You know, outside of YouTube. People really don't go around uh, or really get through the trouble of filing bogus DMCA uh, things because mm-hmm. that's round upon on YouTube. It's like, have fun. See if you can get some money out of it. This this was presented to Valve on the 1st of December. So this month, uh, they delisted, delisted the game on the 3rd. So you think about that. This is, They launched EA uh, Early Access for this in November. So it's not like um, Ark was trying to pull a Nintendo. To like, let's wait until the fan project's complete and boom. All right, we're going to pull it's it like, I'm wait, pretty sure it was as soon as they caught whiff of it. It's like, wait a second. Yeah, so oh, someone's no. like, hey, there's, <laughs> there's this Myth of Empires game. We should check it out and see what this game is doing. See if we can get any ideas for our game. Oh, it's the same game. <laughs> right. Mm. So where, where are we at with this? Because part of me wants to believe that Steam requires some pretty damnable uh, proof before they're going to smash an help button on something. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty I, sure I, I they the, just uh, the, gave them the decompiled uh, binary 
or disassembled binary, sorry, my bad, uh, that they then compared the headers to because that's what they did. They uh, disassembled the ARC uh, binary and the Myth of Empires uh, binaries, and the headers matched. They were basically a one-to-one copy of each other. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. I, again, <laughs> change the variable names a little bit. <laughs> maybe maybe switch like from camel case to underscores or something or I don't, I don't know Speaking anything really slightly changed variables let's talk about the steam deck case the 512 gig model is uh going to come with some new hotness look at that you're like oh man it's completely dipped not really so out of all things to make exclusive valve has chosen to make the case uh, a little bit different um which is a little bit interesting the 512 gig if you've ordered that it's going to get shipped in the case. And it, it's kind of special, though. The Steam Deck logo is a different color. It's got a blue thing instead of blue. purple different in the middle. Color. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> zipper pulls are different. And the case's interior fabric is also different. All that plus. <laughs> yeah, wait, there's more. Wait, there's more. All a, a separate drawstring pouch <laughs> for the power cord and a microfiber cleaning cloth. Now, how much would you pay? Um... Well, apparently, whatever the 512 gig version cost, I look at this and I'm like, that that's a nice bonus. I don't know if I'd necessarily do a victory lap around this, but like, hey, look at all this cool. I'm like, yeah, it's cool. Because everybody it's else nice is time. going, um, cool. A, I just want my dicks. But B, I'll just buy that on AliExpress in a few months for five bucks. You know? No, 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 no. Valve has to be more like Apple and charge like $20 for the cleaning cloth. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be the most popular accessory that they fucking have on. I mean, like, okay, the, the, you're you're buying the top of the line model. Yeah, let's throw in some little extra shit in the packaging to make it a little extra nice. I, I get it, right? Do you think it's more that or like, we fucked up the initial run, but we've made some design changes. So uh, how many we got? May, may, maybe. <laughs> Again, it, it, it all depends on whether when people get like actual production decks in hand, because right now everyone who has one has one of the dev kit models. What everyone so, needs is a Gabe Newell Pez dispenser. Throw that in and I'm sold. <laughs> Does it come out of the nipples? Those would be collector's items. Those, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like um, the Nintendo little bubble head thingies. No. What are they called? No. Now I I know I know we have some 3D modelers. <laughs> I don't know. I audience. saw one if that someone, was an empty someone... box and it was like dad went to the store to get smokes. <laughs> no, no, we, we we need someone to actually make that though. I know we have some 3D modelers in chat. Someone please make a Gabe Newell head or areola Pez dispenser, please. There we go. So we are desperately low on a list that we've been talking about on this show for 10 years. And it's the perpetual, not quite 10 years, but close enough, perpetual early access games. You know, the games like, you know, this early access thing's neat. We don't necessarily have to finish it, but we keep putting some updates out. And we're talking about, you know, not the ones that are just dead, but the ones that are just holding on to it. This is what we got left, man. Um, seven <laughs> days to die. This this is uh, after consulting the list. I'm like, this is all we got. But, but eight years later, they're still pumping out the updates. You got to give them credit for that. They've improved modding support, Twitch integration, along with some animations, over 200 new whatever the hell POIs are. Points That's, of interest. Okay, <laughs> fine. All that. Plus, you get a nifty robotic companion to carry your shit. And I'm like, all right, well done. I mean, let's be honest. You know, in those eight years, the game looks a lot better than it did initially. Yeah, it, it, it looks a lot less like Minecraft now than it originally did. <laughs> And I, and I mean, like, hell, it, this this is a pretty chunky patch. There's quite a bit of content here. So it's not like they're sitting on their ass not doing anything. Like, with distance, they were just tweaking driving mechanics and tracks for fucking two oh, and a half distance years. distance just got laughable to the point of, like, yes, right. let, 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 let's tweak the friction. <laughs> we, yeah, whatever. we need to adjust the campaign, the the last level. You mean the one with the credits? But, that, that but yeah, <laughs> but here, here's, here's the thing, though, like... In, in the era of, like, live service games where you're always going to be getting new updates, just fucking slap a 1.0 on it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, there'll be updates mm -hmm. that break stuff. There, there are several patches and rollbacks in, like, Tarkov and shit that people put up with anyways. So just slap a 1.0 on it. has on, become on. a bit of a meme when it comes to that. <laughs> yeah, well, this is always Tark the Tark actual... Tarkov is on the brain because my boss keeps talking <laughs> about it. The danger so. of early access because there is that temptation of early access becomes your business model. 
<laughs> yeah, ex- except Seven Days to Die has been at this for like a decade now. I don't think they're getting any much in the way of new sales. Yeah, no, and it, it doesn't look like it's getting any closer to being finished because what does that even mean nowadays? Mm. Uh, <laughs> Blasphemous has got a free update all around this week, man. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and this one is, uh, well, it's another content expansion like the previous two that they already had. The um, There was the first I, big I one. I see then there the was... show notes. It's called Wounds of Ever. I thought it was Wounds of Everclear. I'm like, oh, I played that one. <laughs> see, I, I, see, I thought <laughs> that I keep, I keep mixing it up with the next story because it shares, the, the expansion shares a fucking word with it, man. Mm-hmm. Like fucking mm-hmm. Wounds of Eventide. Yeah, no, it's uh, Wounds of Eventide. And uh, this one is, yeah, it's the latest content bit for Blasphemous. Uh, and just like the other two, it's free. And... I'm glad, I'm very, very glad that I haven't started my second playthrough yet. I've already finished the game, but I didn't get the true ending because there's a mechanic that doesn't get explained at all that you need to do if you want to get the true ending, otherwise you just get the bad ending. So, yes, uh, I'm glad I didn't start it for the third time because I've already started it twice and every single time they release the new content bits, it's like, oh, you're too late in the game to actually experience it, which is the case Again, so yeah, if you've already fought Estrus uh, of the um, Golden Legion, you cannot get the uh, the new stuff yet because you, you need to visit pass. his. You need to visit his sister's grave before you fight him in order to access the thing. They're definitely you doing some throwbacks. I'm looking at the snack and I'm like, I'm giving some like Mega Drive um, throwback oh, feels yeah. from that. I'm like, oh, ah. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, it, look, it really feels like they're taking a page out of the uh, Hollow Knight playbook with, uh, oh, with all the yeah. uh, content patches. Check this and out. That's, it's also 75% that's off. It's like six bucks, like right yeah. now. And, you know, the game is a, a little too 2 d soulsy for my taste, but I had a good time playing it's from what Castlevania. I did. It's <laughs> it, it, it oozes aesthetic, and I really, I really love the, uh, the, the theme of it and the visuals and the sound. It's, mm-hmm. it's so cool. Yeah, and you get to fight um, a giant baby. Yeah. I yeah mean, and like the Resident music Evil for the boss fight of the giant baby is amazing besides it being a pretty hard is, boss is, fight is it just a uh, Bieber's baby no it's, I, it's the thing. I was reading through like some of the fixes for this and they, they fixed grammatical errors in the lore descriptions and item names because some dork complained about that there were some inconsistencies <laughs> I wasn't the one who complained, but there were some inconsistencies. Would you be that brave, though? Would you be that guy? Would you, could you power through? Like, do I really gotta be that? Like, oh, is, is, is that? Is I, it? I, I, it didn't bother me because one of them was actually Esposito. Because in the um, the boss fight, it's spelled with an X E X Posito, and then uh, in the lower is, is and that some the new of Street the Fighter version. E- Street Fighter <laughs> EX Pasito. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not unless it's a but turbo no, alpha in the too. lore and the other bits of uh, chat that the NPCs had, th- it would be spelled with an S. So it's like, um, mm. Mm. yeah. <laughs> but you know what? You know what? Our next title is, uh, you don't have to worry about the reading so much. Well, actually you do because uh, you know when there's dialogue going on because people's heads are bobbling around. Bubble, bubble, bubble. That, there's a lot of that going on. <laughs> yeah, no, it's never Winter Nights. The development version is, uh, if you're following that, that I am because it's fun. Uh, and uh, one of the things I noticed, because we talked about Never Winter Nights when they introduced the super HD uh, improved uh, models and textures and everything else. And I went back to play a bit more of the game and I noticed that the pathfinding was a bit um, fucked. You gotta respect <laughs> Never Winter Nights. They don't even... Fuck around. Added demo code for spreadsheet UI. That's right. Yep. yep. <laughs> know your product. Know your customers. Well, I, I mean, they, they they added some new shit to the, the fucking dev console. Now you can actually have JSON arrays mm-hmm. that you can manipulate. So, And if you have the tool set up and running and you want to set up a bunch of custom scripts for your module, you can actually use uh, a lot of JSON entries uh, along with the new NW Sync database that they have going on for persistent worlds okay a lot of improvements to that but yeah no the pathfinding was so broken that to give you an example the my wizard has a familiar that is a pixie and it can disable traps because it's tiny it just gets in between the cogs and it had a direct line of sight and direct 
line to just fly to the trap. It went halfway around the map. <laughs> all, all this, to get all this to the talk trap. about pathfinding in, in a D and D game really like crosses a wire in my head. Coming from a well, I like to see that there's like JSON support. When do you think the Neverwinter Nights Colonel is going to get support for Rust though? I have next release. All right. That is probably going to be Neverwinter Nights 2 when they do the enhanced edition of that. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's going to be Neverwinter Nights Rust Monster Edition. <laughs> no one wears armors. No more uh, swords. No, no more well, nothing. No, no, just it, bows it, it and clubs. It, it doesn't work on Mac <laughs> because it eats metal. All right. Uh. Come on. Coming up next, we got to talk about the brand new 2060. It's not as good as the old new 2060. Wouldn't you know it? You're not blue it's this time week. For the news, I'm not blue this week. Disappointed. No, no. Jordan took all my blue. Uh, he's just wearing it on his shirt. <laughs> I, I blew myself. But if you want to go there, sure. I, 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 for one, am not that flexible. But hey, if you'd like to let us... <laughs> More flexible than your XLR cable that's not even hanging on the right thing. Look at if it. you'd like to let us know uh, just how flexible we can be, you can give us money for us to find out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of a stretch, but you can head on over Do to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, yeah, you, 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 you can you can split your donation into uh, a month of little per episode uh, bit. That's what we charge for. On this Patreon of ours, you get access to our uh, Discord channel. You can get also get access to it via uh, subbing to us on Twitch. Yeah, you can uh, get uh, early show note access. Uh, you get your name in the credits. We'll read it out. We'll say it for you at the end of the show, and you can be like, "Oh, someone on the internet." Somebody noticed uh, me. Yeah. Oh man, and yeah. you know, if you if you pay extra, we won't. Yeah, it's that's true. You, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can gotta, literally you pay know. for all our silence. <laughs> Do you feel like oh. that, man? I will straight up like I, I've dropped like subs and stuff like that. I, I wait for the stream to be over. I'm like, I don't want any attention here. Just take don't the money. Keep say doing it the by video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, you know what? If if you if you're into it, we will accommodate you. Uh yeah, you can get access to uncut vods three days early at certain levels. Air RSVP for game streams when we do multiplayer stuff. Hell, you can even become a co-host if you are so financially irresponsible enough. Uh, we also got a store stored on oh actually we got we got the pre-pre super shows and i completely forgot about that that it's extra thing, hour it's easy to forget Game about Cast because Podcast. it's just fun nonsense if you wondered like yeah. where, where did the psychotic stuff go that's where it's all hidden we invite that we just light it up uh, all we ask is maybe don't narc us out on anything so yeah yeah i had to say be cool uh Yep, yeah, we got we got a we got a store <laughs> store at linuxgamecast.com with all sorts of filthy lgc apparel uh, I put my LGC shirt in the wash, so I don't have it handy this time around, uh-huh. but low, but you can get use me shirts. You can get shirts with me in the cleavage. You can get, uh, masks, stickers, et cetera, et cetera. It's good stuff. It's not, like actually decent quality stuff. Don't have to worry. About it is. It. Completely it is getting disintegrated. We don't make wash. a cut on the, um, yeah, but you see that that's always like the game with a lot of merch stores. Uh, they're like, Oh, just use the super cheap stuff that you can see through and charge. 30 bucks for it. I'm like, no, yeah. man, I'm not going to do that. No, we, we want to cover your we, shame. We, we, and expose we want to cover own. your shame. You're going to advertise for us. So we're going to make it as financially responsible yeah, that, as possible. It, as it'll possible. it'll at least insulate you. Right. It'll, it'll prote- yes. defend you it, from it will the be clothing. <laughs> How cold Unless is you it? buy a sticker. <laughs> it's actually not too cold. Hey man, this <laughs> is Twitch stickers count. Yep. Stickers yep. do count. No, you can oh, have oh, past oh. these apparently. So mm-hmm. there we go. Like, mm-hmm. All over your face. <laughs> Cover it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just just cover co- cover it up. Just don't let people see you. Uh, yeah, we got Wish Zones as well. Um, they're on our website. If you go to LinuxGameCast.com, go over to the support tab. Go on to uh, wish lists. I have one. Uh, Jill has one. Pedro has one. Ven has one for the studio. Uh, they have all sorts of crap. And I gotta I gotta thank someone. Bradley Pariah sent me um sent me a copy of Mithras. I had that on my uh on my uh, wish list. That is a rare uh, edition. That, yes, yeah. it is a very rare edition. It is the apparently it is the print on demand edition because uh, the cover is a little cut off. Uh, apparently the they didn't size that properly. <laughs> um, but uh, like most things on our wish list, you can send us little notes uh, with the packages, and we gotta read them for you. I got this one it says. Hi, Jordan. I realized I bought things off the other guy's wish list in the past, but never yours. What was I thinking? Pedro oh, man, should have been, been last. Dot, 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 you fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking nerd. Yeah, just kidding. Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, <laughs> yeah. from Bradley Hurat Pariah. Festivus, so, bitches. 
Thank you. Uh, I like D100 BRP based games. Uh, I'm excited to read through this and Wait, see. Wait, is that like a manual? I don't know anything about these. Yeah. Things. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's uh yeah, it's for um like a Roman Roman centurion-ish role playing game for oh. playing like in like fantasy Rome. So can you do that without calling like your main guy Rory? It's very difficult, but All it right. is possible. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, his so, wife is not named Amy. What are you talking about? We do want to thank each and every one of you. Make <laughs> yep. all of this possible. Um, let's keep rocking on. We're coming up to a new year, and Linux is getting, well, at least Linux gaming is getting quite different and quite exciting as of late. So yes. we look forward to covering it. <laughs> uh, the did, GPU market isn't, though. Did we mention the Discord? If uh, you, yeah, do, if you sub yeah. to us on Twitch or if you're yeah. a patron, come and hang out. Come and hang yeah. out. We are there. We're talking mad shit constantly, but we're, it's a very polite motley crew. Um, probably not what you'd expect, <laughs> but I mean, I mean that in a good way, strangely. All right. There we go. Uh, it's, it's shilling time. Go we got go go to shill for our favorite company. Oh man. You know it. No, One thing we favorite. love, uh, we never besmirch NVIDIA and especially their new <laughs> 2060 12 gig card that, this way, this this damn thing's just a mining card, plain and simple. There's no way around it. Like, no official announcement from NVIDIA. A lot of their board partners are like, fucking what? Huh? Um, <laughs> to no surprise, this thing hashes like a mother. It's slower than 2060, no cape edition. Wait, no, cape edition. Mm-hmm. So 2060 super is faster than this thing. They're expecting pricing on this little guy to be somewhere between five and $700 because... Fuck you, that's why. And, um, well, I got some, ben- here's some benchmark digits. You can kind of get an idea of where this thing sits. Uh, I want to believe miners will go for these and not the 30 series. I want to believe that, but that's not going to happen. And you want to know why? Because something all this week, man, podcasters, tech personalities, YouTubers, and all that, predicting that, oh, yeah, this will take some of the load off the 30 series. The fuck it will. The fuck it will, because everybody's forgetting something. It's called ROI, return on investment, and a big, nasty, gnarly, hairy chunk of that is what you make by selling the shit when you buy the next set of cards. It's Mm -hmm. an aftermarket sell. And as NVIDIA thought, as NVIDIA was like, hey, we're going to make mining cards with no video outputs and all that. And like, what can I resell those to? Like, fucking no one. We're NVIDIA. It's a brilliant idea. And no, and this is take two for NVIDIA. Very well. <laughs> take two for NVIDIA is this fucking thing. So, uh, you know, it's got the 12 gigs. It hashes uh, better than the um, LHR, well, not even known LHR 3060. Probably going to be cheaper. It's built on a, we were talking about this last week, older known. Uh, so it's Turing shit, which is TSMC instead of uh, Samsung. So they probably got more volume capacity and pump these motherfuckers out. Cause you know, they, this is what NVIDIA cares about. I'm like, let's just get some money. I still think these are going to be a hard sell. Uh, wishful thinking is thinking that this is going to take some of the strain off the supply of 3060s and other 30 series. And the miners will buy these. They fucking won't. Um, this is going to be a, the, a very interesting footnote of, of the Y card. Get one of these <laughs> so you can like have it new in box 20 years from now and do an unboxing of it for a YouTube video. That's about it. I, I need to get one of these so I can play cyberpunk at an acceptable framework. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, it does have uh, 34 ray tracing cores and um, the 20, the original 2060 only had 28. Direct X so, ray tracing performance. 2060, this thing's getting 15 FERPs. A 2070 Super gets 17. A 3060, none, whatever. It's yep. 19. <laughs> and the 6600 XT gets 11. So, I mean, it's faster. <laughs> yeah, that the one gets a passing uh, score, technically. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, like... Here's the thing. This this may very well be the one card that people can fucking get this season. So I don't, I don't think know. so. I genuinely I don't. don't. Um, they no. might be able to pump them out and vol- Okay. All right. I take that back. You're all right. You're correct because I don't think anybody fucking wants to buy these in like it's, it's, it's rows they're, of fuck they're, mothering they're, desperation. It could be a purchase thing. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that's one hundred percent. The I'm price is reasonable well here's the thing they're still going to try to get 500 bucks 600 bucks for these and your other option is not available anything yeah 
the your answer. other option is <laughs> nothing. The empty PCIe <laughs> slot. So again, like I, I can see maybe these things taking a similar to that, that perspective. Fifty seven hundred G that actually has like the best Vega um, integrated graphics that you can get. So yeah, the, the only way this makes possible sense because I have a twenty sixty. I'm using it right now in the box that we use. Uh, I do all the post production and stuff like that. It's only got six gigs on it. And um, like to me, this was, I could only entertain this. Like I was kind of excited because I initially thought hope among hopes that the Jensen and his, uh, the, the actual CEO of the leather jacket of NVIDIA was going to like, you know what? We're going to torpedo whatever Intel's putting out and we're going to make this thing and push it out in volume for like 250. Like then the card makes sense because you're like, okay, oh, yes. it, it is our, uh, <laughs> 3050 instead of having a 3050 we're not going to besmirch the 30 series with a 50 but we'll have this 2060 12 gig to compete against whatever intel comes in it's like fuck that pay us bitch i mean that, I remember that when the 50 NVIDIA series period. were well yeah F- fuck you pay us bitch <laughs> <sighs> that's where that's I'm been true for a long shells. time shells man we NVIDIA love nvidia shells. can't get enough call me jensen day z on linux is now playable yeah, so uh, last week we were talking about the uh, Battle Eye support landing in Proton. One of the games that uh, uses Battle Eye f- for their uh, anti cheat is DayZ, that Arma 3 mod that everyone lost their shit over about half a decade ago. But uh, people are still playing it um, and they pe- wanted to play it on Linux. The problem is, while the game itself does work in Proton, the launcher does not. So uh, yeah. they made their own launcher with Blackjack, a.k.a. Bash, and Hookers, a.k.a. <laughs> hookers. Um, you will need to download the Steam Battle Eye runtime, which was a thing that got released this week. Um, mm-hmm. You could you can have that as an entirely separate Proton uh, uh, runtime. Uh, you have to in, uh, download that, set DayZ to use that, and then, lo and behold, the script will uh, bypass the launcher and get you right into your game so you can wander around for a couple hours and get your head shot off. By someone oh, who's no. been playing the game a lot longer Wait, than you. Hang on, how do I save this as an HTML file? Um, <laughs> I can just do Control S on the whole page. Oh, okay. Uh, then, <laughs> I, then I can double click on it and it'll work, right? Something like yes. that. Okay. Right. <laughs> because file extensions don't mean what the file actually is, isn't that right? Yeah. But well, hey, no, let's uh, also pretend that the browsers work differently between operating systems because they fucking mm-hmm. don't. <laughs> and neither do file extensions. What he was complaining about know, was know, completely off the mark. What? But uh, yeah, the there is actually, or there are a couple of very important notes at the bottom, uh, which are uh, you have to change another virtual memory attribute. Uh, uh, for the operating system. Uh, specifically, this one is the max uh, memory uh, that a given um, application or process can map effectively. Uh, and you have to increase it to, what is it? Um, 1024 by 1024. So whatever the result number is there. And yeah, this is the 1,048,576. There you go. Uh, and yeah, th- this is the second time that I can remember uh, off the top of my head that something about the Linux kernel has had to change in order to make uh, Windows games work properly. First, it was the sheer amount of uh, no file, uh, open no file descriptors that uh, eSync kept spawning because with every job that a game required, it would spawn a new thread new file so you'd have a bunch of new files and the previous limitation uh, that the linux kernel had by default was minuscule so that had to change and now it's the actual maximum uh addressable memory so if we change the numbers the game memory. works yeah yes cool good <laughs> to know <laughs> now day said needs lots and lots of ram we need pager to explain what's the deal about input latency because uh squares i i, I don't get it I, I don't understand, like, my input works when I move shit, shit moves. Yes. It's, uh, for us old people, it doesn't really matter. But uh, if you're playing a game competitively, and uh, you actually see a lot of people complaining about this, like, say, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, uh, people complain that there is input latency on Linux regardless of what you do. And, well, if you're using GNOME, that may very well have been the fact, because... The way that they used to handle inputs and the way that the compositor refreshes what's on screen used to limit just how many inputs you it would account for in each frame. And uh, big, big thumbs up to uh, Christian Schaller for uh, 
pointing me at this on Twitter, I will definitely be having a look at GNOME 42 when this gets implemented. Because, yes, back in the olden days, one way around this uh, was to completely disable compositing altogether whenever you had a full screen thing, which was most likely a game. Oh, finally, um, they, we have a feel graph. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> show me on the bar where you feel. I'm like right here at the end. It Holy touched hell. you right in the feels. Not right there in the, oh, but the, yeah. end of the separation. That's where I feel. <laughs> it is, uh, it, it does feel, if you have a 60 hertz uh, monitor especially, and if you're playing on GNOME, because the way that clutter uh, handles the, um, it handles, or it handled previously, the inputs, it, it only counted, what was it, 60 per frame? So that was nowhere near enough, especially when you have a mouse that is uh, taking a thousand inputs per second. But so you see, comparatively I, I got a switch, speaking, I can cut that down, so I don't have to worry about it. Yes, <laughs> but yeah, no. Even the then cheapest, your cursor moves like, real slow. <laughs> the cheapest optical mice nowadays they have uh, one hundred uh, or a thousand hertz um, polling rate. So you're t you're giving your system a thousand inputs, and it's only rendering like. 0.16 of them. So it's it, it it's not good. And GNOME, well, KDE, for example, the way that they used to deal with it is like, oh, you're playing a game? Okay, nuke the compositor altogether. GNOME didn't really have anything to do with that. So you would either have a compositor running or you'd get tearing. That's it. And now, finally, they're doing something about it. So very nice. It's very good. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's it's an interesting technique where they are essentially like mapping everything to a series of squares so that they can give you a best guess and then actually fill in the blanks later. So uh, you've one, heard it here first, man. Uh, Linux what, gaming more accurate than uh, Irix. Kid than KDE. Well, yeah, it's yeah. not going um, to be artificially limiting your inputs anymore. That's that's the big one. <laughs> so so here's here's the thing though. This is actually only a temporary fix though, as they say at the bottom of the blog post. Yes. Uh, there needs to be some better handling of this at the Wayland protocol level. Uh, this is just a workaround so that GNOME can get this operational, and it's it's a, it's a good interim step because once once we have like a layers of fixes, we can start removing everyone related to the GNOME project. I want you to this needs to be top priority because I will die moderately content if this forces Pedro to start using GNOME. Oh, yeah, I will yeah, use it. The, the, won't force me to use it, but I will use it because I'm oh, no, really curious. I want doors strap, kicking. Strap him yeah. to a chair. I want Big Gnome to come visit you, baby. <laughs> big Gnome? <laughs> it's, it's just like a big guy in like a garden gnome costume. It's like, hee hee hee, it's time for me to steal your underpants, Pedro. Know, that's right. <laughs> <sighs> so it turns out the other Lego MMO <laughs> um, it's getting a second lease. The one life. that didn't come to Linux. Yeah. Yeah, well, so here, here's an interesting thing about that. Did you know that was based on the Gamebryo engine? So potentially OpenMW, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, <laughs> Lego Universe. I was like uh, Ven alluded to, this was the other Lego MMO that was out. It was out between uh, 2010 and 2012. Very, very short lifespan, but, you know, it, enough people played it and liked it enough that they decided that they wanted to get to work on uh, reverse engineering the server. And they have called that project the Dark Flame Universe. And lo and behold, earlier this week, they hit 1.0. So congrats, team. Uh, that's yep. a big milestone. Um, and to celebrate it, they open sourced it. They posted everything on GitHub. And that's a fantastic way to celebrate it. Um, you do. You will actually need to have an original copy of the game in order to connect to the custom server. Although, as I as last minute research I did, was actually based on the Game Brio engine. So we could have like an open Morrowind, open Lego thing happening and have a fully open source <laughs> ecosystem for that. Maybe someday soon. So, Maybe that's how we're going to yeah, get open. Like, like, open get get down, players, down a little bit or is going to be Lego dicks everywhere, man? Um, this, I'm really... This is, <laughs> yeah, they're little, this little squares. Super cool. <laughs> it's better than the tiger anus. Did you see that one floating around Reddit this week? <laughs> Which one? The, the tiger anus. Treat yourself I, I, later, kids. Um, all right. I, I've, I've seen a tiger anus, but I don't think the one you're thinking oh, of. Oh, no, no, no. All right. This game was nuked after two years, so it, no, it didn't have a chance to develop a player base. This was back, you know, 2012, and these eras when uh, basically it's like, oh, what's your MMO? Oh, it's not work. Why are you wasting your time? Why? And they just kept trying. So there was just a graveyard of uh, MMOs that, you know, 
had 20 seconds of effort put behind them, you know, in support from the development, like kill it. So, uh, you know, at this point, I'm not touching an MMO and like, unless, and we've talked about it on the show, it's definitely been brought up unless there's like some legitimate agreement between the development team and just the customer base of like, yo, when we shut this down, it's never to have. Eventually everything's going to get shut down. We are going to open source the back end so you guys can build your own thing and have some fun with it. Basically what I'm saying is I'll never be playing an MMO, but those are my rules. I'm very, very happy to see this, uh, that they've hit 1.0 on this. And that that's a dedicated group of people for a game from 2012, man. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, there's quite a few examples of MMOs or at least uh, online games that didn't get any support post-mortem from the developers and the community kind of stepped up. I play one very, very often, uh, Soapbox Race World for Need for Speed uh, World. And Rusty Hearts also has one, um, and now apparently Lego Universe as well, (laughs) which it's really, they do say uh, that the, this version of the server is for like small parties, like your group of friends, not like a mass scale, no, we're running our uh, MMO server and you can have like a thousand people in one server all at once. They, they very much uh, discourage that. But I do want... I, I want to see that. I want to see someone in the community going, oh, if we improve this bit, we can actually have like 100 or 200 people on screen in any at any one time. That'd be awesome. That I, th- I, th- I look forward to. <laughs> I think that one's actually going to require some like clustered server support because, yeah, keeping track of a bunch of entities. None of these MMOs yes. are running on like a single <laughs> box. They have an entire backend. Shut up. We're but putting yeah, on a I- Raspberry Pi 4. Yeah, a million of them for Jeff Gearling's four people, cluster, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about porn. Yeah, and running it under Linux. That's one of the things that they fixed. Yes, uh, Wine version seven point RC one only is for now porn. available. Not only for porn, but uh, only also for porn. porn. The- Hashtag only for porn. <laughs> the two big things that they highlight at the top is if I do a control F for porn and don't find anything, I'm going to be angry there isn't it's not it's a porn visual novel but uh if you look for cinderella you'll find it nice. oh, it's, it's, uh, it's that fourth one from the bottom yeah <laughs> it's like fourth cinderella. from the bottom <laughs> something like that Promotion but yeah the uh startup man my, my, okay we were talking <laughs> earlier about having to be that guy um <laughs> <laughs> someone reported the bug with a porny visual novel and the wine team fixed it that's all I Some, care about. Someone has no shame. I wish I was that brave. Holy shit. Right? <laughs> but yeah, they also fixed a, a bug with, uh, I think it was the original GTA 3 and the original GTA San Andreas, which the title of the bug was just character just run to left and everything. And if you open the actual bug, you'll see, like, the people are replaced, like, what do you mean? W- what? Uh, and apparently it got fixed with the uh, re-implementation of the WinMM joystick driver. Is it okay? It's, kudos. <laughs> I so, don't know how you You know that. what? Maybe I've been nullified over the years. I, I'm not going to show it on the screen, but I, I, of course, I did a, just did a Google image search for the thing, and I'm like, that's kind of tame, all things considered. Yeah, it's, well, I mean, it's you can nothing, add the words uh, hey, nudity after that, what I'm and you'll get is all it, of the nudity. Pics. What I'm saying is, it's tame compared to what we get on Steam. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got you got to tick that tech box. But one cool Less thing that, that one cool thing that's uh, coming in Wine 7.0 is everything on the Unix Linux side has been moved over to the uh, Syscall Dispatch interface, which is pretty neat. The kernel guys have been working on that for a while. I guess it's ready to the point where um, that can be properly implemented. And that should help long-term with anti-cheat compatibility because you'll be able to uh, essentially mm-hmm. tell Wine like, hey, yo, this is absolutely Windows. Just don't look behind mm-hmm. the curtain. Um, but I, I got to ask. What's mm-hmm. the over under on Proton GE 7.0 releasing just after we hit stop on the record? This it's week. probably already out. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, that's how it rolls. I mean, that's how that clock set. It showed up on the Ubuntu repository for the Wine HQ earlier today. So yeah, yeah <laughs> I see, think Glorious Egg rolls already on it. This is the reality. Like eggs only fucked up once in recent memory, and like got that out the mm-hmm. same day. And it was like <laughs> while we were in the like, pre-show. He was like, caught you, motherfucker. Oh God, ah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, coming up next, 
take me out to the black. We're leaving Ven there because he doesn't like clip point and click RPGs. Uh, we're throwing chairs at Drox Operative 2. Welcome back to the chair position. This week, we're taking a look at Drox Operative 2, done by Soldat Entertainment on a custom engine. You can pick it up for about 20 bucks. What is the chair? What is the game? Drox <laughs> Operative 2 is the starship action RPG with warring races, fierce space battles, and a dynamic evolving galaxy. And like big, multiplayer for Windows like and super Lips. fierce or what, like rawr fierce? Right. What is the chair position, you no might ask? In space, no one can hear you. <laughs> in, yeah, in space, no one can hear you. <laughs> It's a cat fight, all right. Uh, what is your acquisition, you might be asking? Well, you ignorant sluts, that's where we take games, uh, install them on a bunch of Linux distributions, uh, test them on a bunch of different hardware, and give you our thoughts and rate them on a scale from one to four lawn chairs. Oh, you Super forgot the scientific. best part. You got to get all of your thoughts, hints, allegations, and things, but you better leave them unsaid in under three minutes. Or you're all right. Out. Set the yes. clock, baby. I'm going. <laughs> Go. All right. So, on Fedora 35, 64-bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, holy tiny window, Batman. It starts off in an itty-bitty window, um, but you can change the resolution. I had a full list of resolutions my monitor supported, unlike Pedro. Uh, Control-wise, mm -hmm. the controller rumble rumbles so damn fucking much. Oh, my God. Non-stop. <laughs> um, you get asked if you want to use mouse movement or keyboard movement at the beginning of the game. And if you want to swap it back, there's a very tiny option in the menu with very, very tiny text that you're going to have to find. I couldn't find it. Pedro had to find it for me because I am fucking blind. Uh, the graphics are pretty simple, but they get the point of Kloros. It's a lot of, like, NASA backgrounds with, like... Babylon five quality CGI planets, but you know, it gets, it gets the point across. You're zooming around in space. Uh, I thought the soundtrack was surprisingly bumping, but I guess we're just kind of stuck with electro as space music. It's unfortunate. Cause I'd like to see some like grungy, crusty black metal or something. Country. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that, that's surviving <laughs> Mars. Um, fun wise, I enjoyed it quite a bit. It's spaceship Diablo. And I guess I'm just into that shit. Sandbox, very, very sandboxy. There's a ton of factions to move around, lots of fog of war, lots of big maps with secrets to uncover. You have six win conditions, three lose conditions, so there's a lot of ways that you can attack the various problems. Plus, since every playthrough is randomized, it's quite a bit to keep it fresh. Sometimes you try to be a nice guided species, give them the benefit of the doubt, because they'll probably make strong allies. And then when they refuse, you just accidentally wipe them out because they don't know a good deal when they see it. Bye-bye, Brunt. That's what happened to those guys. Uh, at one point, I looked up at the clock, and I realized that 90 minutes had passed. And I went, oh, I guess I'm actually enjoying this game. Um, I figured this would actually be pretty fun with network multiplayer. However, there's a bit of a problem there. Um, everyone's got to punch some holes in their uh, firewall. you got to forward some ports because this game does not nat punch. Um, and you can't even list your servers. you got to do direct IP connection. I have dynamic DNS set up so that people can type in a human readable name and connect to me, but you can't do that in this game. No, you got to use the dig nope. command and get that IP address. <laughs> um, still, the single player seems to be more than enough to tickle my pickle. It's a fun little fuck around simulator and like it's just straight up space Diablo, which I'm into. So I'm going to give it four chairs. I had fun with That's this so game. That's so rare. I only have three loaded up. Squint. Pretend it's four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Jordan really liked it, which is odd. I'm usually the one that gives the most chairs, but hey, over here on the so Ryzen 737 X. Yes. <laughs> I, I like video games, go figure. With the GTX 1080, it launches out of the box. Uh, the resolution choices, as Jordan already hinted at, on my system were very, fairly limited. I got 1024 by 768 or 6400 by 2160. So, yeah, <laughs> time to track down the config file. If you're wondering, it's in home.local shared Drox operative to user, user.config. Uh, and, yeah, it is, uh, once you're there, you just find the R height and the R, uh, R white, and it will give you the white? options with, sure, uh, the it will give you the values that you have set it to, and you can change it to whichever ones you like. There's an option, there's a little tick box in the game to enter the uh, graphics options that says sync to screen, but it doesn't seem to do anything. Hence, while you, while you're seeing like the 150 to 400 FERPs uh, in Mango HUD there, you could probably play this with just a mouse, but uh, yes, using WASD or the cursor keys, it seems to be the preferred method for movement. There's 
Jordan already mentioned this too, but there's some weird upbeat music which doesn't really fit with the space theme terribly well. But the lasers go pew and the missiles go whoosh, so fair enough. As for the fun, I don't know if this will be fun if you've never played a Soldat game. If you have, it doesn't matter which one you try, this is more of that, but with a space team. Um, it's whether you've played Din's Curse, uh, Din's Legacy, is on beside the previous Rocks Operative. If you have played any of them, you already know your feelings towards Drox Operative 2. You have, you can set the scenario exactly the way you like it, as easy or as hard, as sparse with enemies, or as crammed filled with them as you possibly can. Do you want to eradicate all the races in the sector? Do you want to get them all to work together? for the titular uh, Drox operative? Uh, do you want to fuel the war between two of the races and just watch them uh, bring each other to poverty? You can. These are all viable options. And if you've explored the different options in that Din's Legacy, which was the one we threw chairs at mo most recently, uh, if you've explored all the different options there and you just want more of that, but with a change of scenery, Drox operative too. If it weren't for the resolution cock-up, I would give it four chairs, but three it is. <laughs> I stole that from you. I stole your chair, Pedro. Oh, <laughs> yes. man. You damn <laughs> chair thieves. Let's go ahead and pull that three back. All right, check it out. Debian 11. I got a system. Uh, as the internet has told me, it is running a Threadripper 1920X. Horrible for gaming, apparently, with a 2060. Who the hell uses a Threadripper for gaming? <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> Deviance. It's interesting. It's interesting. So on a technical level, everything works out of the box. Didn't have any issues with that. Now the, I will say the game audio does need adjusting because out of the box, you are clipping son. You are. I happen to look back on the meters on uh, my Moto. accurate metering. You're in the red. Need to tone that down a little bit, but Hey, this is fun. I kind of groaned a little bit this afternoon when I had the chance to sit down and spend some time with drugs. Cause I saw both Pedro and Jordan had more than an hour of time in it. I'm like, oh <laughs> no, this is going to be one of those games. And it was. So you fly around, you blow shit up, and you manage some spreadsheets. Uh, I don't think I missed anything. Just maybe not my gem. Uh, Drugs too. It does have a very interesting mechanic. If you're watching the video version of this, uh, it forces the player to constantly fight a mini boss during your entire run, during your entire playthrough. Now, there's no official name. You know, I checked what lore there was for this mini boss, but I've named it uh, the game's UI because it's bad. It's crowded pop up information over. Hang on a minute. Let me click all these giant green check boxes. OK, the tutorial um, load a lot of overload on that. I uh, wasn't expecting that. But if you're looking at the video version, you can't have an ar honest argument with me on this. You're like, yeah, it's a lot of shit, isn't it? It is. No. <laughs> Is busy. <laughs> it's a bit. It's a bit. It would make some mid-80s DOS games fucking blush. Son. Now, I could never fully decipher the interface, but, you know, I'm clicking around. I'm trying to figure out things going on, you know, uh, but nothing in the game itself really enticed me to fully decrypt all of this stuff. It's, again, this genre is not my jam, but I got to try it out because who knows? This could be the game that changes my mind on all this stuff. I spent about 50 minutes clicking around and blowing shit up. Mm, I mean, if you're a fan of drugs, this is more of that, according to all the reviews. But yeah, uh, you're going to be able to play it. So I'll, I'll say too, I'm not going to blow it up and say that it, I mean, work has went into this. It's, uh, you know, I, I can sit back and look at it and be like, all right, this is, you know, and plus you too. I always put that metric in there. Like, yeah, you guys are putting some time into it. All right. So so, uh, out of curiosity, uh, which which uh, people or which uh, ship did you start as? I started as the, the fuck ever uh, was the guys. first one. That one. I, I picked the robot dudes. <laughs> I started Pedro. with the insects, <laughs> the the hive uh, people. Yeah, the, uh, just they, they were, because they were my I looked first at alliance. This, yeah. Because yeah, I started looking at the stats of what they're doing. It's like, okay, no, nope, that seems nope. useful. Let's uh -huh. go with attack bonus. That's now I roll first. <laughs> first, I visually scan for like auto generate or fuck this noise button. Uh, failing that so human yeah it's human, the I first think thing all the way down yeah I'm like this yeah, is good. Uh, i do not i don't care what game it is even games that i spend time you give me a character creation like cyberpunk what do i look like first option Ge generic all the yeah. generic human yeah pretty much like, yeah I, I i went with the robots strictly because they gave you more damage based on your computer skill and i'm like ah i know what i'm min maxing 
Mm. Um, <laughs> I did play enough to realize that my inventory is not unlimited. I'm like, damn it. Oh yeah. Inventory management yes. and like get, getting the uh, cargo base is like a huge fucking deal. Okay. Actually, that tripped me up a little bit because I, I remembered like right at the beginning when you start like, Oh no, this is like storage areas. Like, aha, I can dump some of this shit. And I went, I'm like, how the fuck base. do you do this? <laughs> um, yeah. Well, it, also if you want to deal with the stash it also, you need to actually deposit the cargo bays. You can't deposit like individual items. Then I hit my C which, button and it pulled up my crew and I spent some points and I saw a button that says pay crew. Stop paying crew. I'm like, Ooh, that would be handy to know what that. All right, I guess I'll pay the crew. Um. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, there, there's there's a lot of stuff that doesn't happen until you're like deep in the game. It's like like you said, there's a ton of work that went into it. Like mm-hmm. it's very 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 deep, very very nuanced. Tons of ways you can play it. I think yeah. Uh, I think maybe maybe at the twenty dollar price, it could come down a little bit more. But still, like there's a lot of game here. You're it's probably not, gonna get your money's yeah, worth. Yeah, it's not cheap. You, yeah, they definitely have their fan even, base. Um, yeah. And even with their other games, like we threw chairs at, uh, Dean's, Le- uh, Dean's legacy and that it, for a, a hack and slash, it has so many like mechanics hidden under the surface and you, you are, I'm missing a word here. <laughs> it is absolutely your choice to choose which of them you interact with because you don't have to interact with any of them or you can interact with them all. It's it's what they do. It's that one game and they seem to just in- reinterpret that, those mechanics into a space game or a hack and yeah. slasher or a zombie survival game. And, and yeah. That's my, their my, my chief, <laughs> my, my chief complains along with them. I would like to be able to move the little windows around once they open, because there's a lot of like UI element hiding stuff and there's a lot of menuing you need to do. Also that tutorial. Oh, it's a bit rough. Really that's rough. a, <laughs> big massive info if you're not into this genre it's a big info dump for a new player walking into this and um especially you know here, here's what i'm saying probably not your thing if you're going to do what i do which is like hey i just want to go blow some shit up i'm like yeah that's going to get old after about 52 minutes and like all right um no oh, i gotta read ah, <laughs> reading is hard speaking of which coming up next more reading it's the hate mail segment It's over. You did it. You made it all the way through. Unless you Fuck skipped you, I skipped to this. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what that's you, you get for time stamping these videos. <laughs> that's that's why they're there. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you very much uh, for watching till the end, if that wasn't the case. Uh, and uh, we do appreciate whenever you have some hate mail to throw in our direction. So if you'd like to do that, there's a very easy way to get in touch with us and guarantee that we will read your thing, which is to uh, write the message, put it in a bottle, and throw it through our windows. I mean, uh, go to linksgamecast.com, hit the contact button, and fill out the form. There's LGC Weekly is the topic that you need to send your hate mail to. Otherwise, uh, we will feature it on uh, other shows. Or you can ask Jordan for relationship advice. So do, you, do you have any or windows like they're street facing? Me? No, Pedro. No. I'm just trying to calculate where the brick's coming from. <laughs> None of them are uh, anywhere near no, a street. It, it, actually, it's pepper, right? <laughs> That's the back patio where all the chimney. buildings. And the other one is to like the uh, in between the patio, but for the parking spaces. L- l- listen, Pedro, I have a special relationship with God, and He will hurt people for me. <laughs> Smite, <laughs> Smite the bricks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this starting off last week, uh, we were talking about the lightest kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bob is talking about what was going wrong, and one of the issues that was brought up was the OBS lack of browser. I should say, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, was I was, was under the impression that, that yeah. it that it shipped by default. Well, it 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 does, but also no. <laughs> Uh, okay it does if you use the official ppa uh xanthrius writes in xanthrius listening to this episode the issue with obs and the browser source plugin was added in the official release for linux after the video was recorded but before it was uploaded and community builds have been adding that in for years now to this we're having a little bit of a discussion before pedro gets into this completely (laughs) because <laughs> I read this and I'm like, hmm, 
I remember I thought it was like OBS 25 when the browser showed up in the official PPA, mm-hmm. which I don't use. I run Debian. We're cool. We just build stuff from source. Um, so I, I went and like I was on GitHub and like going through the releases and I was like, aha, it was immediately followed by right with the browser source enabled. If like you opened up a dialogue, uh, dot choose anything, it would crash OBS. So they immediately removed it. Funnily, funny enough, the solution to this was to switch the toolkit for that window to um, QT from GTK. Yep. Like, hey, it's all <laughs> but oh, GTK bug to this question. <laughs> And this was last year, or at the beginning of last yeah. year. I don't know when it was reintroduced <laughs> when the browser came back to the PPA because I don't use it because I run Debian. You Ubuntu user, Pedro? Yes, that's the thing. I have been using the PPA version for a while because KD Neon, I'm it's uh, based on the LTS version. So, uh, yeah, I've been using the PPA version for a while and it has had the browser source in there uh, since, what was it, March 2020 that it was originally released? I don't remember ever having a stream where the browser source just disappeared. So, (laughs) I don't uh, don't know. And I doubt, I mean, the way that um, Xanthor has said it, it's like the issue with OBS is that the plugin was added in the official release for Linux after the video was recorded, the video was recorded this year, and it was added to the official Linux release in March 2020. What? But it disappeared. But it came back. But I think we don't it was know what 2022, it but I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe it was two weeks ago. <laughs> I've had the browser source. You've seen people I chat know. on my streams. The, the so. super lazy thing about this is I know a couple of the OBS devils, and this is like a quick message away to getting the exact date, but fuck it. Let's speculate. That's what we're doing. <laughs> yes. Might as well. <laughs> Jordan, you're the fedora. You run the meme disp- dis- distro. I, I, yeah, I do. you do. Um, I, 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 <laughs> And I, I've, I've done some I've done some streaming on it in my day. Yeah, I, I well, I built my OBS from source. But anyways, this is from uh, Christian Schaller, head of uh, desktop at uh, Red Hat. Yep. And uh, he says he, he responds to uh, Vin's little uh, diatribe <laughs> last last week regarding uh, a lot of the interfacing Linux videos and OBS basics videos he's put out. And he says, man, you guys are impatient. My wife and I have been watching two young kids alone and trying to get other work tasks done. I added a specific call out to your hardware list. And now I will data mine it for more smiley face. So thank you. Thank you. But give me a little spare time to live to, please. No. How dare you have a life outside of computer science? You must be a slave to our whims. Do what we say. Obey. Like, I I mean, if we want to be mean, we could say, yeah, the list was there before you put the thing up. So, well, I mean, if (laughs) if you're going down the mean route, the big meaning, maybe do a fully researched list before releasing it as like the best foot Mm -hmm. forward. To the community. <laughs> I, I mean, the the, the 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 slap back to that would be it's it's a wiki. Everything is in progress at all times. Well, the initial layout of the, and that's what I took issue with because it was a bad a, a list of bad Google searches and incomplete information. I'm like, ee, ee. I, but here's the thing. I said it's a good idea. I championed the project. Still do. I'm not rushing anybody. I just want to make sure you know since they are in the process of reinventing the wheel on this. And that's, maybe re- it was a new thing to finish my point. Maybe get in touch with this guy up here because he knows quite a bit. Like, have you gotten an email? Have you gotten a direct message or anybody be like, Hey Jordan, uh, let me solve all of these problems. And, uh, you can just rattle them off. What? Pedro. No, 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 no one talks one. to me. <laughs> no, 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 I'm pointing at Jordan, not you, Pedro. Yes. Uh, I, I was pointing at Jordan too. How's right there. See, it doesn't make sense in my monitor though. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense on video. <laughs> if you're looking here, it's up there. <laughs> you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta stick each index finger in each eyeball like this. Yeah. yeah. Then you can see the pretty colors. No, no, no. But like, uh, again, like it, it, it's a wiki article, right? Like the, these things mature over time. Um, I'm, I'm just happy to see Fedora actually like putting together an initiative and saying like, hey, this is a thing we actually want to do. We yes, want to but focus I'm trying on to this. rope you into extra work. See, we have conflicting <laughs> interests here. 
<laughs> ah, fine, <laughs> fine, fine. But yeah, fine, the, the fine. argument as to, you know, maybe rushing it or having something before you make it live, a wiki or not, is that it got a lot of press coverage when you first put the wiki page up. And everyone was like, yeah, we're doing the... But uh, here's one the of the things about the wiki, the thing. because uh, you, you're going to add to it. I mean, it, it was a start. You know, this wasn't yeah. like... Um, Nothing in there was non-factual. I mean, yeah. outside of no. I'll, I'll still take the issue with it you. It was just incomplete. Incomplete. <laughs> but it, it the got thing. the attention <laughs> and it did what it needs to do. It's got the eyeballs on it. And when you do that, as being a wiki, you're going to want contributors and you're going to get yeah. them. And I think it's a fantastic, again, I think it's a good project. I like it. Mm-hmm. I like what they're doing. I'm happy to see I it. like Fedora too. So yes, please more. The but boys uh, and girls yeah, in blue. Now you know what happens. <laughs> Well, I, I demand. I demand, demand at least one of his ch- children for feasting purposes. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, you know, if you've been watching two young kids alone, easy solution: blindfolds, and you won't be able to see him. <laughs> You're gonna be have a little bit of a hard time editing wikis too. But uh, I thought well, you know you the blindfold the kids, kids no. so that they would run into the wall and knock that themselves. That would out. be cruel. <laughs> blindfold the parents. Hard mode. <laughs> Man, that, that that should be a mod for who's your daddy. God damn it. No, <laughs> and what does he do? <sighs> I'll tell you what he does. He's going to scroll down here and he's going to look. Uh, come on, where did I move it? There it is. He's going to cue the music. Because on, on that bombshell, we got to bounce off, out of here. Hey, thanks for sticking around watching to the late, late, till the end of part of the live stream. It's kind of brilliant. Get in touch with me on Twitter. Nick Christian did. At Vin Stone. That's what I do. I social media the stuffs and things and I post there. There's probably a connection. Also, we have a federated timeline at mast.linuxgamecast.com. I'm just at Vin there because it's ours. I mean, call ourselves whatever we want. I'm your favorite meme streamer, Jordan Svung. You can find me doing that crap on twitch.tv slash burning fool whenever I got a free moment to play some games. Otherwise, you can follow me on Twitter at the burning fool. And you can find me uh, at unaccounted for on Twitter. That that's pretty much it. I, I I I'm not a sociable person, and I'm certainly not a social person either. So, but are you a living yeah, me? Twitter? Not yet. Credit Give it time. <laughs> Netflix has to pick us up first, man. <laughs> We're long past the first season. Hey, hey man! <laughs> if, they, if they got Auntie Donna on board, they can get us. I'm just saying. Right. Got to think our. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Got to thank our patrons, our advisors, Omega and our Theron, our executive producers, Aldius, Bob Bram, Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Tom Cass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, and Kohaku, and our little Nicky fans, Darkwing, and Abstraction, aka Nixon's Pyramid. And the Sea Monsters, Jack, Renault, Ryder X, Machina, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, and Strider. Aww. With the Death Notes. Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marcin, I'm just going to go ahead and get Craig, some Doom Renee, 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 Chris, Stephen, Joel, Free for all. Look at, look sure at the chairlings. Benjamin. Darkness <laughs> and Mag, Ryan, TG, Martin, Linux Noob, Colin, Steve, Ryan, Kishi, Joanna, Zeno, Minus Nine, Chaos, Monica, Oil of Hope, KR Ducky, look at these fuckos, Rudy, Belric, they are uh, on Ven's wall. The wall they are fuck. flying through space. <laughs> Will they collide with a planet annihilating all life? You gotta be careful, Probably. man, because I, I do forget that that's not permanent. <laughs> that's liquid chalk. I almost like put my eyes like, whoa, that'd have been messy. <laughs> right? Time to fight everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Bye. Five dudes.